The main purpose of liquid retaining structures is to store liquid throughout its uh, service design life uh, without leakage, right? And that's why it imposes a number of challenges during structural design. Like we will have to limit uh, the value of crack width within permissible limits during demanding conditions like uh, during presence of hydrostatic pressure, hydrodynamic pressure, temperature, shrinkage, uh, etc. So that's why a design of liquid retaining structures is uh, substantially different as compared to the conventional structure side. Right? Uh, so to address this uh, area of specialized uh, structural design, we are glad to put forward our online course uh, for the design of liquid retaining structures. So it is titled as RCC STR002. So the course will uh, mainly focus on the design of uh, liquid retaining structures with reference to Indian standard codes, uh, which are IS-3370, IS-456, IS-11682 and uh, IS-1893. But let's say if you are uh, working on different international codes, then your uh, specific queries related to other international codes are also welcome uh, during this course. And uh, as far as softwares are concerned, we will be uh, uh, experimenting uh, different computer models using State Pro or CTC. As well as recently, we received a request that it would be great if we can uh, include EDEPS also. So for with EDEPS also, we'll be creating a couple of models uh, for the uh, for the let's say rectangular tanks. So if we talk about main uh, highlights of the course, uh, there will be detailed discussions on uh, different codal provisions. There will be a number of manual calculations uh, which will be performing uh, throughout this course. Uh, the seismic load calculations we will be calculating as per IS 1893 part 2 along with the uh, recent amendment uh, which was published in uh, 2022 for IS 1893 part 2. Uh, for the crack width calculations uh, we will be performing a number of calculations throughout this course because it is extremely important for the liquid retaining structures as we just discussed. Uh, we will be creating number of FEM models using uh, State Pro as well as a couple of models will be generating using uh, EDAPs also uh, throughout this course and there will be of course manual verifications of uh, design results will be done uh, in, in let's say in, in number of examples and we'll be also having discussions on the case studies right so these are the quick highlights of the course so now let's see how this overall content is uh, divided into numbers of uh, sessions so firstly we will start uh, with the detailed discussions on the IS3370 part 1. We will also discuss that what is the importance of IS3370 part uh, 1 for the design of liquid retaining structures. We will talk about exposure conditions, durability requirements as well as uh, uh, there are different types of joints uh, which, which are required to be provided in the water retaining structures like uh, complete contraction joint, partial contraction joint, sliding joint etc. So we will talk uh, about each different types of joints mentioned in IS-3370 part 1. We'll continue our discussion on uh, IS-3370 uh, part 1 uh, and, and in this session we'll be talking about uh, design and detailing of different types of joints which we just uh, discussed. We'll also talk about uh, spacing of uh, moment joints, uh, then jointing materials such as joint fillers, water bars, joint sealants, etc. Then important points for the constructions of uh, floor, walls, joints, uh, etc. And also we'll talk about testing of structure in line with uh, IS-3370 part 1. Thereafter we will uh, initiate discussion on uh, IS-3370 part 2 uh, which is again very important part for the design of liquid retaining structures. So firstly we'll talk about different loads which are to be considered uh, for the structural design. Then we will have very detailed discussion on the limit state design which is uh, which is mentioned as a as a design method so what are what will should be the load combinations what should be the maximum tensile stresses in the reinforcement what should be classification of tight nets etc now crack width as we just discussed uh, before also that it's very important and very crucial so we will have very detailed discussions on the crack width requirements uh, with reference to part 2 of the document. We'll also talk about uh, reinforcement uh, detailing, minimum reinforcement, size of bar, spacing between bars, etc. Of course, we'll talk about uh, stresses due to temperature changes and also we'll talk about reinforcement uh, detailing at uh, wall junction in this session. From this session onwards, we will be 
performing number of manual calculations. So to start with, we'll perform uh, detailed calculations for the crack width for immature concrete as well as mature concrete uh, with reference to 3370 part 2. And based on these calculations, uh, we will do number of iterations to identify important parameters which are really impacting the value of crack width. Right? And we'll also formulate certain exercise uh, and those problems will be given to the participants uh, to ensure effective learning. In the next session, we will initiate our uh, discussion related to IS 3370 part 4 section 1, which is talking about plate analysis results for the individual plates. We'll be talking about different loading conditions which are considered or included in the in this part uh, as well as the different boundary conditions which are included in the tables. We'll talk about important points to be considered while reading this table. Right? Uh, so we'll perform manual calculations for a few uh, examples. And for the same examples, we will generate computer models uh, in the STAT Pro for verifications of the results. And from that, we will derive certain do's and don'ts and important points with reference to software application also when we talk about FEM uh, methods. We'll also formulate uh, certain interesting exercise and which will be given to the participants uh, towards the end of the session. In the next session, we will start a uh, discussion about IS 3370 part 4 section 2, uh, which is covering uh, the design tables for the rectangular tanks. We'll talk about uh, single cell and uh, multi-cell rectangular tanks as it is mentioned in the document. We'll talk about again important points to be considered while reading uh, the tables. We'll again uh, uh, perform number of manual exercises uh, to find out the, the analysis results based on the design tables and the same uh, rectangular tanks, we will generate FEM models using STAT Pro as well as EDEPS. And then we will compare those results with the design table results, whatever we received from the from this document. And, and based on that, we will make certain important observations, kind of do's and don'ts. Right? And we'll also formulate a couple of interesting exercises which can be completed by the participants to ensure effective learning. In the next session, we will uh, continue our discussion for IS 3370 part 4 section 3, which includes the design table for the circular tanks. We'll talk about different loading conditions, boundary conditions. We'll talk about uh, ring tension, which is very important for the circular tank. Uh, we'll highlight few important uh, points like do's and don'ts while reading this uh, table. And we'll perform a few manual exercises uh, to uh, to understand uh, the, the application of this design tables uh, for the real projects. In the next session, we'll talk about uh, IAS 116H2, which is uh, for the design of RCC staging for the overhead uh, water tanks. In this uh, session, we'll talk about uh, different shapes of water tanks, such as rectangular, circular, ins, etc. Layout of water tank, uh, arrangement of columns, subt, uh, type staging versus columns, reinforcement detailing, etc. So we will have very detailed discussions about IS 1116A to the present document. Now recently you may be aware that the uh, draft document is published by uh, BIS uh, Technical Committee uh, which was uh, published on 25th November 24. So that uh, draft document also uh, we will discuss quickly and we will try to compare the differences between the present document and the draft document and we will have uh, discussions on few important points based on that. In the next session, we will uh, initiate very detailed discussion related to IS 1893 part 2 2014 uh, for seismic design of liquid retaining uh, structures. So we will have very detailed discussions clause by clause uh, for, for this document. And we will uh, discuss uh, the, the, the recent amendment which was published uh, in 2022 for this document. We'll talk about the spring mass idealization, which is considered for seismic analysis in this document. We'll discuss about concept of impulsive force and convective force, uh, the calculation of time period, calculation of base shear and base moment, uh, the calculation for the impulsive hydrodynamic pressure, convective hydrodynamic pressure, effect of, of vertical ground acceleration and seismic design considerations for the columns and the shaft staging when whenever let's say we are providing elevated water tanks right in the next session we will perform a few manual calculations based on is 1893 part 
2, 2014. Uh, so we'll perform uh, seismic load calculations for the liquid retaining tank. We'll calculate uh, time period, base shear, bending moment at the base, overturning moment, impulsive hydrodynamic uh, pressure, convective hydrodynamic dynamic pressure, etc. And based on these calculations, we will uh, derive the important parameters which uh, uh, which needs to be focused while performing this calculation. So after finishing all uh, all these discussions, we will take a couple of case studies for uh, design of liquid retaining structure. So one of the case study we'll take for the large tank and, and we'll design uh, the tank as a cantilever uh, in, in this case study. We'll calculate different loads which are applicable for the uh, for this uh, particular wall we'll perform seismic load calculations we will calculate bending moment shear forces etc and we'll perform design calculations for reinforcement check for shear minimum reinforcement etc and finally the reinforcement detailing will be done in the next session we will uh, take up one of the rectangular water tank as a, as a case study again we will calculate all different loads we will perform seismic load calculations uh, we will read the data from the design tables and the similar tank uh, we will also model into the uh, state pro also in the, in the subsequent sessions but in this session we will calculate uh, the bending moment shear forces axial tension uh, everything using the design tables We'll continue our, uh, our discussion on this case study uh, wherein we will calculate uh, the required reinforcement. We'll check against uh, minimum reinforcement. We'll perform check for shear and we'll also talk about reinforcement detailing. In the next session, we'll take up the same rectangular water tank as a, as a case study uh, to, to demonstrate the design of uh, retaining or liquid retaining structure in state pro plus RCTC. So we'll generate uh, uh, FEM model using uh, state pro, right? Uh, we'll apply different loads and uh, after performing the analysis, we'll compare the analysis results, uh, whatever we get from the state pro, uh, as well as from the design tables, whatever we have got. We'll continue our, our discussion in the next uh, session wherein uh, we'll transfer this analysis model into the RCTC and then we will generate or, or rather we'll perform the design calculations in RCTC as well as we will perform detailing into the RCTC. And then we will compare uh, whatever results we have got uh, through our manual exercise and whatever results we have got uh, through state pro plus RCTC. Right? And uh, based on the comparison, we will derive the important points which will be extremely useful while working on the real projects in the last session we will have a discussion on unresolved queries of uh, participants we'll also have discussion on findings of uh, participants for the case study exercises right? we'll also discuss about way forwards uh, and finally we will be having concluding remarks right? So looking forward to see you inside this unique online course for the design of liquid retaining structures. The course will commence from 19th December 24 and link for registration is mentioned below on the, on the screen. Thank you.